certainly can't wait to bring you that story again coming up at 6.45. But first, let's welcome you in 6 o'clock here on your Wednesday. Jason and Alicia here with you to kick off the day. Yeah, a lot of news headlines to get to. Of course, we're tracking everything with Hurricane yes. Adalia. A lot of viewers here have cabins, you know, and uh, condos down in Florida area, John. Yeah, that's something we're going to be really taking a dive deep into at home. We're dealing with some air quality problems, but it looks good in the Twin Cities. The green is good and it should push out all the smoke by later this morning. So that'll be good news there. Temperatures, other story. Look at the 40s out in Hayward. We're waking up to low, low 60s, mainly upper 50s. You're going to notice it's a cool start. That's going to lead to a really nice day. Temperatures in the 60s, then we go into the 70s. 76 by 3 o'clock, topping out around 77, 78. A day in the 70s before we talk about a long stretch in the 90s in your forecast. All right, heads up in the Bloomington area. We continue to monitor this crash on 494 westbound. They are towing one of the two vehicles involved in that crash away. Until that gets cleared, though, look at this backup here. 494 westbound right where it meets 35. This is the ramp from 35 to 494 westbound. And let's take a look at just how far this backup on 494 goes. Here we see the camera at Lindale. Cars slowing already at Lindale, and actually it looks like a little further back. So again, 494 westbound causing problems this morning, Jason. That is not good to see. All right, Jen, thank you. Let's turn back to that breaking news we've been following all morning long here. Hurricane Adalia just upgraded to a Category 4 hurricane. Yeah, it's making its way to Florida's west coast right now. It could make landfall within the next hour, and once it hits, it's expected to cause catastrophic damage. Now, we just got this, this picture in, which is very hard to see out of the Key West. The rain and wind making it hard to see anything there, but you can make out some massive waves hitting the shoreline. We also have a reporter in Sarasota right now where in the last hour streets there have started flooding. Good morning, everyone. I'm Neil Fisher with 10 Tampa Bay. Sarasota police have blocked off Highway 41 in downtown Sarasota as storm surge continues to make its way onto the road, causing significant problems in the downtown Sarasota area. Police are stationed around Highway 41. They have it shut down between downtown and Fruitville Road as the water continues to rise. Water rushing into the parking garage of Marine Tower. Meanwhile, Sarasota police tell me several boats have broken free, including this sailboat, which is nearly on North Gulf Stream Avenue, another road that is impassable. Law enforcement will likely have to be in this area in downtown Sarasota, shutting down these roads for quite some time as the storm surge continues to rise. All right, let's check in with Cece now, who's following minute by minute updates over there at the live desk. Some images already coming in from the damage of the storm. Yeah, you're totally right. I mean, the new videos coming into our newsroom in the past few hours are really something. I made a compilation. You saw the flooding. Now we have the high uh, winds here that you can see the speed limit sign uh, going back and forth, the flooded streets. There's also a roof that was damaged this morning already. So a lot that's already happening here, a lot of heavy wind, heavy rain, so that uh, uh, the Floridians are waking up to this morning, but within the last 30 minutes, the Weather Channel just posted breaking news on its X account. They said an extreme wind warning has been issued for parts of Florida's Big Bend until 8:15 a.m. our time. And then about a few hours ago, the National Hurricane Center took to social media to tell residents to take local officials advice and evacuate. They highlighted the impacted areas, as you can see there, and there are already reports of several flooded streets in those areas. Here's what a longtime resident has to say about the hurricane. This storm is worse than we've ever seen. My family has been here for many generations. Uh, we haven't seen a storm uh, this bad ever. Yeah, and just to add on to what he said, officials are saying that you need to go all the way back to the late 1800s to even find a storm of this magnitude in the Big Bend area. I'll be back in 30 minutes with more updates, but for now, I know John's also tracking this hurricane. Yeah, we really want to talk about here, you know, what the storm surge really means, and that's a hurricane's deadliest threat, especially this one. The initial rush of water comes in suddenly. Three feet of water is life-threatening. At six, the waves cause significant damage, and at nine feet, this is where the flood is going to move into the city, and it can move more inland and that is at the point where you need to get out of the city. Now for a double threat, Mother Nature is talking about a king tide expected today. That's when the sun, the moon and earth align and that's going to give us an additional foot or two on the storm, storm surge today. 
All right, John, thank you so much for that breakdown. And make sure you stay with CARE 11 for the latest on Adalia. We're going to have updates as Sunrise continues. And then coming up right after our show on today, we're going to get another live update from Florida. All right, back here at home here at your time, 6.06. And this morning, new details about a child shot in Brooklyn Park almost 48 hours ago. Police say it was a seven-year-old who accidentally shot his nine-year-old brother in the head. Police say the seven-year-old got a hold of the loaded gun and accidentally fired it. His brother went to the hospital with serious injuries, but he is expected to be okay. Police haven't said who the gun belonged to or if criminal charges will be filed. We spoke with police about how to prevent these types of shootings. The answer is easy in my mind. You keep them locked up or, or, or if you can't commit to that, then you don't have them around. This is, this is just one of several recent incidents in our area. In the last two weeks, a Hinkley three-year-old accidentally killed himself with his father's handgun. And three weeks ago in St. Paul, a 14-year-old accidentally shot and killed his 12-year-old brother. In well, just a few hours, Republican state lawmakers are holding a press conference to call for changes to a new state law restricting school resource officers from using certain types of restraints. So all of this comes after the Hennepin County Sheriff and Coon Rapids Police decided to pull their officers from schools. In a broader education spending bill this spring, lawmakers banned SROs from putting kids face down in prone restraint, restricting breathing, or placing pressure on the upper body. Now, those rules don't apply if there's a threat of death or injury. But law enforcement groups say the law is too vague and opens their officers up to liability. DFL leaders say they're open to making changes, and its education policy chair says he is listening to the critics. They have my word. We're going to have a hearing on this, and we'll invite all the stakeholders because we want to hear and we want to get it right. Republicans say the governor should call a special session to fix the law and respond to law enforcement concerns, but Governor Wallace says that's not necessary. But he also said he was open to making some changes when the legislature returns in February. With the new school year kicking off, it's clear some students continue to struggle with their mental health. And to increase access to treatment, a local company is embedding therapists right into schools. LA Mental Health started this idea about five years ago, but demand has skyrocketed since the pandemic. It's now in more than a dozen schools across the metro and have hired a dozen new therapists that are on site to help kids every day. The need has just increased so much to the point where we have school districts that reach out to us and go, please, 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 can you come into our schools? The South Washington School District that includes Cottage Grove and Woodbury is just one district contracting with LA Mental Health, saying that they're grateful to offer this service. And we know this is a really big issue for some of you parents out there, along with school violence and what's being taught to your kids. And that's all based on our back to school parent survey. There's still time to weigh in if you haven't yet. You can find it at care11.com survey or text the word survey to the number on your screen and we'll text you back a link. Let's take a look at this. This is a live picture at 608 from inside the care barn at the state fair gates open in less than an hour. Pretty dark in there right now in the barn, but we'll be out there for trivia at 1030. Also, today is Kids Day, so anyone ages 12, 5 through 12 can get a discounted ticket into the fair. Bring the kids.